Hello, assalamu alaikum and good evening. Welcome to another episode of Health is Wealth. I am your host, Shabnam Riaz. Okay, today we've got, you know, a really different program for you and I'm really, really happy to be able to host this because our guests that are here with us today, we've got a whole panel of, uh, you know, guests today, experts in their field. And what we're going to talk about today is diabetes and diabetic foot. So these are things that are really, really important. I mean, if you think of it, people who are actually getting diabetes because they're not aware that it's something that could have been prevented and then you know all those complications afterwards and those serious health issues that can again be prevented if they get the right care this is what we're going to talk about and we're very happy to have with us today here in our studios we've got four guests who are from um, England at the moment, from the UK, and they've come over, you know, specially, and we're going to learn about what they're actually doing and, you know, how they're helping Pakistan. They are the four founders of the International Podiatric Medical Association. They are all diabetes special podiatrists. And I'm going to introduce them one, one by one. Dr. Osama Khalid, thank you very much for being here. Okay, wa alaikum salam. Dr. Aisha Vajahad, thank you for being here. Thank you, thank you so much. And Dr. Mohammed Dossif, thank you. And Dr. Abid Hussain, thank you for being here. Okay, so we've got a full panel here today and you know, I think it's really, really lucky for our viewers that they're going to be able to hear about something that many times people do not have that information, especially in our part of the world. So, you know, if I start with you, uh, Osama, um, you know, what is the importance of being aware about being a diabetic mm -hmm. and you know what should people be doing um well it's, uh, uh, well i think it's firstly quite important to actually define what diabetes is um and the thing with diabetes um we have quite a few different types mm. the most common type being type 2 diabetes mm. uh, especially here in southeast asia in, in pakistan in particular right. um, and that is the the body's inability to mm. actually produce enough insulin mm. To, to regulate the, the blood sugar levels uh, in the body. Mm -hmm. And that then leads to elevated blood sugar levels in the body. Mm. And that is, is, what, is what we call diabetes. Mm. And then it can lead to many complications. It can lead to quite a few complications. Um, it can obviously affect the, the whole lower limb, so the whole foot and ankle and the leg. Uh, it can also affect the eyes and the kidneys as well. Mm. Uh, but in terms of our work, we're, we're really quite focused on, on making sure that your feet and, and your legs are quite healthy. Because um, the thing with diabetes, what, what it tends to do is it tends to damage the nerves in your foot and ankle. Mm. As the nerves get damaged, mm. you tend to lose sensation and feeling in your feet. Mm. Mm. Um, and everything that's fantastic, you can't feel pain, that's brilliant. But the issue mm. with pain, pain tends to be motivated to, to seek help. Yeah. If yeah. you can't feel any of the pain, so you can't feel, for example, if you're walking on a stone, mm. that's in your shoe and you just don't realise it, people just carry on walking absolutely fine. But right. what would happen there, it can lead to secondary infections and it can lead to a whole host of different sort of um, other complications. Mm. And worst case scenario, it can lead to a, a sort of a, a below knee amputation. And that is the idea behind, behind podiatry. Because mm. uh, I think personally our sort of role is to prevent lower limb amputations where we can keep people mobile, keep them healthy mm. uh, and keep them moving. Right, right, okay. Dr. Aisha, tell us about your experience, because you've been working here in Pakistan as well. Were, uh, you, how many podiatrists were there here? Um, I was the first one, okay. and uh, the first qualified podiatrist. Okay. Um, we have uh, foot care assistants, mm. um, but we don't have any qualified podiatrists. Okay. So I was the first one. The experience was, was overwhelming <laughs> to start with. Nobody knew what podiatry was, what the role of podiatrist is. Uh, I would have people come to me for uh, asking for uh, to massage their feet and that kind of thing. So <laughs> I had to work really hard to get sort of, you know, to, to get the message across that, you know, right. podiatrists uh, do a lot more. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I, I was basically working for, uh, for diabetic patients. I was mm. treating all sorts of problems mm. um, related to diabetes mm. and, uh, and lower limb. Uh, my main focus was ulcers, so mm. the wounds that uh, uh, diabetic patients have. Mm. And unfortunately, what I what I saw here was that nobody's working on prevention. So it was more about treatment. Absolutely. And by the time a patient came to me, it was most of the time it was end of life situation. So mm. it was 
it was um, near to amputation. Mm. Oh but dear. alhamdulillah, I have been able to uh, to save a lot of limbs, and uh, hence why I went back to England, spoke to many podiatrists, and brought them back. Fantastic, so, yeah. and we're going to hear more about your story and how you yeah. guys got together and what you've been doing here in Pakistan. Okay, uh, Dr. Tosif, if I can ask you, you know, as uh, Dr. Aisha said, prevention. Yeah. Prevention is one of the most important things, and, and <laughs> this is the, one of the you know uh, points that we make on this program. Is this, you have to prevent things if you can. So, what are those prevention measures? Um, I think in terms of uh, the prevention measures, uh, uh, a lot of uh, the emphasis has to be on uh, the education of uh, the patient. Um, first of all, the patient need to know whether they are uh, diabetic, mm -hmm. and if they are diabetic, they need to look after their feet a bit better. Uh, in terms of, uh, as Osama mentioned uh, previously, that uh, uh, they can have vascular problems. Mm. So the blood circulation to their feet is not as adequate uh, um, as the diabetes progresses or mm. if the diabetes is not very well managed. Mm. Um, and uh, neuropathy, which is uh, loss of sensation in, uh, uh, in one's feet mm. because of diabetes, which is one of the main uh, uh, risk factors, uh, mm. um, which leads to um, ulcerations to start off with. Mm. and. Uh, uh, then it can, if the, it's not managed uh, appropriately, it can lead to amputations. Uh, um, in UK, I work for Sandwell and West Birmingham Hospital Trust, and uh, a lot of my uh, patients are from uh, Punjab, uh, whether that is uh, from India or Pakistan. Really? And we, we generally tend to say, see the same sort of uh, mm, characteristics in both uh, sort of the communities. Same Absolutely, so yeah. same attitude uh, mm. uh, in them. And, uh, um, one of the things which I picked up mm. was lack of education, mm. so they don't really understand the condition. Mm. So if they don't understand the condition, they don't know what to do about it, uh, how to prevent things. Um, in the UK, as um, we have, uh, for, the, for the feet, we have diabetic foot screening, mm. which um, is an annual uh, assessment uh, of their feet, where we actually check their uh, um, general health of their feet, mm. circulation, and uh, their, uh, how the nerves are behaving and whether they have got neuropathy or not. Mm. And uh, following that, we categorize them into a low, moderate and high risk patient. Okay. And based on that, we yeah. give them appropriate uh, advice. And the um, appropriate advice uh, um, can be as simple as uh, checking your feet daily because if you haven't got any feeling and you don't check your feet, you have got a little uh, breakage in the skin, that mm. can lead to um, an ulcer. Okay. And uh, there, there are many more. Uh, right. Those um, are just some of the examples that you have examples, given. Yeah. Okay. Um, Dr. Abid, uh, Dr. Tosi, you've mentioned, you know, the screening. So uh, how would you say, you know, uh, here and worldwide as well? What, what, uh, what we know, first of all, uh, diabetes is a massive problem worldwide. There's 450 million diabetic patients and it's growing substantially. Um, in 1985, it was 108 million, so this has been a, quite a large increase. Um, depending on the country that you're born in, there's different types of screening that occurs. Mm. We know in Pakistan, approximately, there's 35.3 million, mm -hmm. um, but there's no centralized database, so in yeah. the, that's a guess because people go to um, public hospitals and they go to private hospitals mm. as well. It's a big problem in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. So there's 150,000 amputations that occur every year. 150,000, which is amputations. really that's a really and high number. And I mean, many can be prevented. Yeah? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I mean, I would say almost all of them can almost be prevented. Almost all of them. Imagine uh, that. Worldwide, the uh, it's said that there's one every 30 seconds. Um, we don't think, well, we know it doesn't get as much attention as renal and eye problems for diabetes. Mm. Um, feet tend to be neglected, mm. um, especially in Pakistan where, where, where like, as Aisha said, she mm. was the first p podiatrist in Pakistan. Mm. Um, there is, we have to take a more holistic view on this. So mm. um, we do need to talk about diet and uh, exercise and smoking because mm. mm. all of these things will affect um, mm. your chances of getting an ulceration and then getting an amputation mm. but yeah we do we do need to discuss how we can set up an a adequate um, screening program for Pakistan show right okay and also you know as you know found a common denominator amongst everyone who's, who's speaking here it's the attitude and the mindset yes, isn't it absolutely because, um, uh, you know as as you mentioned it's ironic that, I mean, it's the feet that will keep you 
That's you know, on your yeah. feet, yeah. <laughs> walking and everything, and so essential. And we tend to ignore them. And as you said, you know, we we'll, we'll, we'll let matters get worse. So, how are you guys working? in promoting that awareness and tell me about your work that you're doing here because you are at the moment here for a free camp yeah free camp. so how did that come across how did you get organized and what's going to happen go on, sure. start with the okay. so i went back to england mm. i wanted to go back for uh, to sort of speak to other podiatrists mm. and sort of uh, report back to them as what is needed in Pakistan mm. and uh, uh, Abid I've, I've known for a while so I mm. spoke to Abid and then I spoke to Tosif so we all have a uh, have a UK podiatry um, Facebook group okay. and that's how we started oh, and okay. we sort of you know I just one day decided to write a status mm. and invite podiatrists and all four of us got together and Fantastic. that's how it really started mm -hmm. and that's how and that was how long ago this was about six months ago? It was just, it was just six months. Just so six months ago. In the past six months, we have put a lot of effort in and a lot Fantastic. of time in just trying to organise these camps. Right, yes. okay, so <laughs> what did you have to organise and where are you operating right now and where will these camps take place? So first of all, we, um, we have formed um, an organisation, mm. International Podiatric Association. And this is on Facebook, yeah? This is on yes. Facebook. We have our own website okay. and we have a, a, an office as well. Mm. And after that, uh, we decided to, to go for this pilot project. Okay. And Osama can tell us a bit more about this project of ours. Right. Absolutely. So, um, so, so the idea behind the project is to sort of come back to Pakistan, because all of us have Pakistani heritage. Right. It would be quite nice to come back to the, to the, to the motherland, as it were. Mm. Um, and we sort of organized two camps, as it were. So one in, one in Gujranwala mm. and the other one in Gujarat. Okay. Uh, and the idea behind it, there's been quite a lot of PR behind the camps before we attend. Okay. So word of mouth has got out that four people are coming from the UK to come and treat you. It's right. free, of, free of charge to come over. Fantastic. Um, and we are, we, we're, we're working quite closely with the sort of nurses and the allied healthcare people in Pakistan to help us with that. Fantastic. So, um, those camps will sort of take place on uh, Wednesday and Thursday mm. this week. Mm -hmm. uh, and the idea behind it is we'll have quite, quite possibly a few hundred people coming our way. Mm. They'll be triaged, basically, mm. and they'll be brought our way. And um, there'll be a full sort of assessment done of them. So it'll be a, a vascular assessment, check mm. that the, the blood supply coming down to the legs and feet are healthy, mm. check the nerves are healthy. Mm. And as Dorsey was saying, it is, is assigned the risk status, basically. So mm. effectively, what we're doing is implementing uh, a, a sort of a a technique that's employed in the UK mm. over to Pakistan because because we know that back in the UK that technique and that that, that assessment works mm. and if you can bring that back to Pakistan mm. that's the idea really mm. okay and, and yeah sorry uh, what we want to do is uh, this is a pilot uh, sort of visit uh, mm. and what we want to do is we want to actually draw some of the uh, statistics what what we think and um, what what's uh, uh, what sort of problems are uh, faced by uh, uh, people here suffering with diabetes and based on that when we go back we will have uh, an action plan um, and uh, we will try to focus on uh, much needed um, things which uh, need to be focused on right. whether that is uh, health promotion whether that is mm. uh, training more uh, mm. people to basically mm. uh, take right. care of them okay and yeah. also you know <clears throat> at the same time we've got a lot of challenges yeah. because you've got the patients from the UK that you're used to working with, yep. and then you're in Pakistan, okay? So there's a whole different culture here. Absolutely. A whole different mindset, a whole different lot of challenges for people as well, for the patients that you're going to see. Mm. I mean, many of them, you know, they can't afford uh, to see a doctor no. regularly, Absolutely. and may maybe that's one of the reasons that these things go unchecked. Is that so? Absolutely. I mean, there's... there's uh, socio-economic factors in mm. so mm. Uh, regarding foot amputations um, mm. it has a knock on effect so when a individual loses a limb 70% mm. um, of them die within five years mm. but it also affects the family and if they don't pass away they, mm. um, a, a child might leave school to take over from what the adult used to do especially yes. in a rural community yes. which is why what we want to do is not only create the camps which we are going to do every year mm. but we want to create a training program which is what I'm very passionate about okay. to to train uh, diabetic foot care practitioners assistants mm. to be able to screen and treat diabetic mm. foot ulcers mm -hmm. um, it's quite a large plan and it's mm. quite an ambitious plan mm. uh, where we are realistic about the expectations about how quickly this will be implemented but this is this is what we want to do within the next mm. one to two years' time. 
Okay. Um, but eventually yeah. what we really want to do is, these are, uh, they're just diabetic foot care assistants, but yeah. we, we really need podiatry degree, a whole program to be introduced in this country. Right. And because diabetic foot care assistants will only, the training will mm. probably be for a couple of months. Yes. Right. But we need a full on uh, degree. Right. To, to sort of, yeah, so that, okay. that's our long term plan mm. to introduce the whole, the the full program. So what the, what's the feedback that you're getting when you're you know, asking I people to come into training? And I mean, the, the feedback on the whole has been quite positive, I think, anyway, mm. because when we mentioned to our colleagues that we're going to Pakistan to, to, do, some, to, to do some diabetic camps, mm. the feedback was over, overwhelmingly positive. Mm. We had a lot of people um, contacting us, asking if, if they could come on board. Mm. Um, and I think that's fantastic, e even those who are not of Pakistani heritage as well. Mm. Um, but I think the whole idea is, as full podiatrists, Unfortunately, we can't treat the entire country as it were. Course, so what we need yeah. to do is ensure that the country is self-sufficient mm. and our training program will actually grow homegrown mm. podiatrists in Pakistan who can then treat their country Fantastic. and treat their people. Fantastic. That's the idea. And another thing I think that's really important is that, you know, the awareness issue. Yeah. Because um, if you keep seeing something on the media, you keep reading about something, uh, you're, you're exposed to that information. It's going to grab your attention at some time or the other. What would you like the media to be doing right now? Well, I have a little personal experience uh, given that I work uh, very closely with the Asian community. Okay. And uh, one of the challenges which I personally faced when I started off was that getting the message across. Mm. And uh, um, I was finding that uh, some of the podiatrists was like literally handing in the information leaflet in English and the patients can't read it. So there's a mismatch ah, uh, right, there. Right, of course. And then there was, we've got, uh, we've got Urdu mm. um, uh, leaflets as well. So, mm. But again, they weren't being able to read that and the information wasn't uh, being passed on. And that was one of the biggest challenge. The biggest challenge, um, right. And in order to actually speak the language mm. and uh, be able to explain uh, things mm. to them mm. Uh, mm. appropriately mm. have uh, brought very positive results uh, mm. uh, and how patients started to look after their uh, feet themselves and it is going to be a huge challenge for us. Right. Uh, yeah, um, but so we definitely want media to support yeah. us to definitely, get the message across. Definitely. Because and I would think that this programme would you know, be really, definitely. really helpful to so many people who, because you know, as I shared with you on the programme before as well, I recently became diabetic yeah. and I had so much problem in getting all that information together and uh, whereas, you know, I'm you know, hosting a programme on, on uh, uh, medical issues, but for me myself as well, it was rather overwhelming yeah. to understand where I have to, you know, be careful, be careful. Uh, about and what what subject. So you know, the media doing programs like this and um, getting the information across that is very important. And um, if somebody wants to reach out to you guys as well, they can do that. Yes, this is what mm. I was going to say. Yeah. They can visit our website, Facebook page, mm. or if we can give our telephone number, we're here for another week. Mm. Uh, even when we go back to England, you yeah. guys can reach out to us. If you have any problems, please do okay. contact because us. Because I would like you know people to take advantage of this camp and everyone who's watching here in the country. Mm -hmm. So what telephone number would, would, would they be able to contact? Do uh, you have a telephone number? At the number? moment, we have a Pakistani mobile telephone number okay. and I can give you that and right. anybody we'll include that at the end of the show yes definitely yeah? mm -hmm. anybody and who has any problem they can reach out to us right because I think you know the main thing one of the the first things is the accessibility for something yeah. you find out that okay I have this problem I need this to be treated and now what do I do I think that's where one of the steps comes in right. Right. I think it's empowering people with diabetes to realize that they need to take care of their feet that's that's, that's the first thing mm -hmm. and to realize that a small problem can become quite a large problem and that they need to take it seriously mm. and not to um, not to use home-based remedies for yeah, something that can be quite serious. That is a very important so point So for, yeah. for example, this might sound funny but it's not. I mean people put haldi on a onto a wound, on a dressing, mm -hmm. which is like great for food but it's not the best thing to put inside a foot. Yeah. Um, and I know of stories where people have lost limbs because of this. Mm. And it's, it's, it's something that can be prevented, mm. completely prevented. So mm. we need them to take mm. their foot care seriously, especially mm. if they're diabetics. Okay. So patients mm. t need to take the responsibility mm. as well. Mm. I think um, what I alluded to earlier mm. about amputations and preventing amputations in Pakistan, it's mm. not just diabetes and amputation that, that becomes the issue. Once a patient has an amputation, as I've mentioned, they are 
likely to pass away in the next five years. We know, we, know, we know that mortality, of, yeah. uh, mortality rate is 70% five mm. years post amputation, mm. Mm. which is very, very high indeed. Mm. Mm. But it's not just the amputation that affects them, it's everything else. It's quality mm. of life reduces dramatically. Yeah. The, the family life, you know, it, it just goes down. Right. So the whole mm. idea behind it would be to sort of prevent, if we can prevent all of that mm. through our work, that's mm. the idea. That's the idea behind podiatry, really, to be honest. It's really preventable. Preventable. Yeah. Right. Um, in, in terms of getting them moving and keep keeping people mobile. Okay. It's the cost as well. I think yeah. it's, it's it, diabetes, diabetic foot in particular is quite expensive, the right. treatment of it. Right. Every year it costs NHS 25,000 mm. pounds mm -hmm. just for one foot, mm. just for uh, one ulcer, sorry. One, yeah. one ulcer? One mm -hmm. ulcer okay. treatment right. for a year costs NHS in, in the UK, twenty-five thousand pounds. Wow, that, that well, we is quite that's an amount. Well, it's more expensive than cancer it's, treatment. Um, I agree. It's because um, the frequency of the visit there yeah. that yeah. is required. Um, so if somebody develops a uh, um, um, ulcer, yeah. um, they tend to be in our multidisciplinary team. Mm. They, they'd be seen by the podiatrist uh, mm. every to um, every round a week, or mm. sometimes twice a week if there is on a pressure. Uh, uh, area where they are building a lot of uh, hard skin, uh, okay. um, so they they seem very frequently. As well as uh, in in UK, we have a very good system where we have a multidisciplinary team where uh, there's a podiatrist, there's a vascular surgeon, there is a diabetes specialist uh, mm. uh, person, there's an orthodist. Uh, they're all working they're together. They all work together yeah. right. uh, to to be able to actually provide the best uh, solution for the patient. Uh, okay. And it, it is costly. Yes. Right. Let's go to uh, through some general sort of like tips for people who are watching the show today, right? And they they have they are diabetic or somebody in their family is diabetic. Yeah. What are some of the general tips you know to go through that you know they, they should be doing? Oh, you mentioned something about daily checking. Absolutely. The so I mean, in terms of the simplest thing you could do, it's just check your feet daily. Okay. Either check them yourself if you can't check them yourself because you can't bend down or reach your feet to get a family member to help you. Right. Use a mirror. There's multiple aids you can do to just check your feet. Just check that the, the skin's all healthy and intact. There's no bleeding, there's no cuts, there's no grazes anywhere. Because mm -hmm. we know once there's a cut or once there's a graze, that's a portal of entry for infection. Oh, but what okay. we do know about diabetes is those who have diabetes have a poor healing potential, which means that once they get, once they get an infection, mm. it takes them a very, very long time to heal. Mm. Um, so if you, can, if you can just check your feet daily, make sure there's no scratches or any sort of cuts, that's, that's a great thing to do. Right. If you can wear socks, which I appreciate isn't very common here in Pakistan, everyone's wearing sort of flip-flops because and of the sandals because well, of the weather yeah. as well, yeah. Mm. If you are going to wear them, and ideally don't walk around barefoot either, always, Do always have something on your feet. Foot. It's right, really important. Okay, that's very important. Yeah. Especially think, um, in the hot weather as well. I mean, there's been cases where people walk around barefoot because perhaps accessibility of shoes mm. isn't very good here. Yeah. And what, happen what happens there is because they can't feel anything, they damage the sole of the foot. And that can uh, lead to a, a, right. an, an instant amputation, to be honest. Mm. Um, so just really quite simple things like checking your feet daily. Mm. Um, um, and if you are going to wear socks, wear quite light, light coloured socks. And things like that, just small, really simple things. Tap your shoes out if you are, if you are going to wear them, so make sure nothing's in your shoe. Right. Um, because often kids can throw toys in shoes, for example, and people don't uh -huh. realise. Uh, often small little things like buttons. That's pretty, you know, things you don't yeah. really, yeah. really realise. As you said, you don't, you don't sort of yeah. put them Things together. like buttons, battery, My small little things, just make sure that nothing's in your shoe. Tap them out quite, and make sure they're all fully empty. So you're not walking on a stone, you're not walking on a button, you're uh -huh. not walking on something like that. Right. That can cause yeah. an ulceration. Right, yeah. I, I think what I find in... Um, Pakistani community mm. in, in Pakistan and in the UK is that because Pakistanis tend to walk around quite a lot barefooted, mm. we tend to get very dry skin around the heels. Okay. And the dry skin becomes fissured, which means we get small cracks within there. Right. As, as he was just talking, as like, as like Osama was just talking about, this is the ideal port of entry uh. for bacteria. Uh -huh. And once they get an infection through these fissures in the heels, mm. um, they can easily get infected and it takes a very long time to heal. Right. So it's very important to cream your heels if you've got dry skin. Okay. Um, twice, maybe even three times a day if you've got very dry skin. Mm. There are special foot creams you can get hold of that mm. have got special ingredients in there that will really help people mm. with dry, fissured and hard mm. heels. Mm. Okay, right. I, I think footwear is another issue. Yeah. Footwear, I was footwear. just about to get into that one. <laughs> and Aisha, you know, please sort of like, you know, Ladies who, Ladies. who in, <laughs> insist on wearing, like, sometimes something looks really good, yeah. but it just doesn't suit it, your feet. So exactly. tell Especially us about the dangers diabetic, of that with diabetes. With yeah. diabetic Tell us about patients. that. 
So the footwear is, is, is very important. Mm. And the tip that I would like to give here is that you need to break into your shoes. So we, we often get people who, who have new shoes and they just want to wear them mm. if they're going out somewhere. Mm. And, but you really need to break into your shoes. And with, uh, as, as Osama has mentioned, and Torsi, peripheral neuropathy. So mm. if those shoes, uh, as you would relate to this, mm. that every time we get new new pair oh, of yeah. shoes, it, they, they definitely cause some problems. Definitely. So diabetic patients would not be able to feel those problems. So they really need to have a look at their feet and just see if, if, if the shoe has caused any rubbing. Right. Or if there's any pinkness around any area, mm. uh, so yeah, I think uh, break into your new shoes mm. instead of just wearing because them for long hours right, right away. So you know, to get, just tell our viewers that the issue here is what our podiatrists are telling us, is that if you have diabetes, you won't be able to have that sensation in your feet. So that if something, you know, you're getting a wound, you won't realise unless you are checking daily. That that's the Absolutely. gist of this. That's yeah. The gist of it. Okay. Right, um, right now uh, we are going to go for a break, yep. but don't change the channel, stay with us. <laughs> Sarangi is a bowed, short-necked string instrument from subcontinent, which is used in Pakistani classical music. Its flexible tunability and its ability to produce a large pillay of tonal color an emotional nuance makes it unique. Carved from a single block of wood, the sarangi has a box-like shape with three hollow chambers called stomach, chest and brain. It's usually around 2 feet long and around 6 inches wide. It has three melody strings and 11 to 37 sympathetically vibrating metal strings. Okay, welcome back to the program. We're having a really informative episode here. We're really lucky to have four experts who are sitting here, you know, amongst us. And, you know, they've come all the way from, from the UK and they're trying to work on awareness and treating and managing a diabetic foot in Pakistan. Okay, we were talking about, you know, when you get a, a problem with your feet, you're checking them, as we said about the preventive measures and everything. So, you know, you find something, you find a cut, an ulcer, or what, what do you do next? Right, um, if you actually find, um, as Osama mentioned, that if you have a cut on your foot, that is a portal of uh, entry for an infection. Uh, um, and uh, the way to manage that is, uh, uh, if you do find a cut, make sure you use lukewarm water, 
just clean the area off uh, um, nicely mm. and uh, put a dry dressing on. Mm. Um, all you're trying to do is uh, um, providing an appropriate uh, environment for that cut to heal mm. uh, and uh, it will prevent the bacteria getting into, into the wound. Mm. Um, if, if you see some signs of infection, which are uh, typical cardinal signs of infection, the red, swollen, painful, uh, pussy if the discharge is coming out quite regularly. Mm. Um, the, this is the time when you actually need to seek help. Um, go see your doctor. Mm. You might need uh, uh, antibiotics to fight off that infection okay. and uh, seek further <coughs> help with regard to the dressings. Okay. Another thing I want to ask you guys is that, you know, we're talking about feet and sores and blisters and whatever. What about other parts of the body? Um, so, in terms of diabetes, we also know you can affect your eyes and your kidneys in particular. Mm. So, so what we tend to say is eyes, kidneys and feet are, are the mm. three main things that are affected by diabetes. Um, what can happen with your eyes is you can often get small little cotton wool spots at the back of your retina. Mm. And what happens there is that your, your, your sense of vision decreases with time. So, the, the longer you've had diabetes, mm. so worse your, your sort of vision gets. Okay. And uh, what happens there is if, if, you, if you're losing your sight, mm. the ability to detect issues on your feet oh, yeah. also reduces. Uh, and that, that becomes a big issue. And that's why we often ask people with diabetes, ask relatives or friends or family to help inspect their feet. Right. Um, so, yeah. Right, okay. And um, sores and blisters that are uh, appearing in other parts of your body as well, how about those? Are they going to be sort of treated the same way as you would on a diabetic? Oh, definitely. Yeah? Definitely. A be wound must be covered. Okay. So mm. I think um, uh, that's one area that we mm. really need to educate people on, that don't mm. leave it open. Yeah. Make sure the wound is covered mm -hmm. so no bacteria can get in. Right. I and must add uh, to this that some of this advice uh, may sound uh, absolutely trivial. Um, that uh, we need to check our feet. Mm. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's a very basic thing. Mm. However, NHS England have actually thoroughly researched uh, on this uh, uh, and uh, they've kind of put together the advice slip for the low, moderate and high risk patient for these reasons is because uh, these are uh, the, the reasons why people actually initiate mm. an ulcer mm. and initiate a problem which can actually then become a really major uh, problem mm. the, like amputation. Mm. One of the things that can occur is a fungal skin infection. Oh, yeah. And it can happen in between the toes, and it's called athlete's foot. Okay. Um, if a patient, if a person is getting really itchy skin in between their toes, mm. that's something that needs to be treated as soon as possible, because mm. that, uh, that can also become a portal of entry mm. for And what bacteria. is the treatment for that? You can get um, creams mm. from a pharmacist, mm. uh, and, and it can be treated quite easily. Okay. As long as you sort of like start treatment straight yeah. away. So keeping reason feet dry is one of the main okay. tips. Okay, keeping feet dry. Yeah. 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 The, the idea would be to treat the fungal infection mm. and then to prevent it from coming back. And mm. to prevent it from coming back or getting it in the first place is a really, really good foot hygiene mm. um, sort of routine. Mm. Just so people have sort of <coughs> morning routines or evening routines, mm. the feet are no different. It should have a really, really regiment idea of how to treat your feet, how to wash your feet, mm. how to take care of them to prevent secondary infections taking place, like fungal infections. Mm. And if you get a fungal infection, it can lead to secondary bacterial infections or mm. it can lead to a fungal nail infection that can then spread across all your nails. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we wanted to talk about the nail infections as well because those are something that are very common, aren't they? Absolutely, yeah. 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 So, um, what what are the signs there? For um, fungal. So, I mean, the thing with fungal infections, they tend to sort of start up with sort of uh, fungal nail infections, tend to start up with fungal skin infections, and, and fungal skin infection on the skin is very very easy to treat. It, it sort of responds quite well to over the counter um, creams and lacquers, etc. Mm. Fungal skin uh, nail infections tend to be a little bit harder to treat. Um, okay. I mean. They tend not to be harmful to you mm. and tend to sit quite happily in your nail. Mm. However, they can be a little bit unsightly and from a cosmetic point of view, mm. um, people tend not to quite like them and, and quite mm. like to get them treated. Mm. Um, so it, it's quite a simple thing really by in terms of preventing it to, to get it in the first place is just wash your feet daily mm. uh, and dry thoroughly in between your toes. Keep your feet dry. Uh, keep your feet dry. That's something you guys Absolutely. are repeating mm -hmm. again yeah. and again. And on top of that, we, we also moisturise the feet as well. So moisturising is really important to, to sort of replace that dryness Can that you're getting. Can you have any moisturiser and use that? Or any moisturiser, I mean, we didn't say anything is better than nothing. Mm. However, if you're looking for a, a particular sort of foot moisturiser, you're looking for an ingredient called urea, U -E -R -E -A, mm. uh, 10 to 25 percent is ideal to be quite frank and how that works is it's got a twofold effect mm. um, in terms of it, it draws surface moisture mm. quite deep down in, mm. into, into, into the lower layers 
And, and what that does is sort of moisturise the feet from the inside out, basically. Um, so if you use any sort of cream, that's ideal. Mm. I tend to recommend tops and bottoms of feet, and, but you don't moisturise in between your toes. Because if you moisturise in between your toes, they tend to get more soggy, and that can then precipitate oh, a fungal oh. skin infection. That can then lead to a fungal nail infection. So it's all kind of linked to it together. Yeah. So it's really important that, that you look after yourself in that way as well. Mm. So One that's treating your uh, foot, but you also need to treat your shoes. Mm. Yes. yes. So ah. that's, that's another... Mm -hmm. yeah point that we need treat to treat your shoes treat with your the antifungal well. spray yeah. yeah with with okay so you get antifungal sprays for shoes as well so because your foot will eventually go back in the shoe so okay. mm. if there is fungus present in the shoe mm. you're just going to keep you're getting just, it yeah, yeah. So it's, and it's you like need it. to also wash your socks at a high temperature because the socks will yeah. lose that and chain socks yeah. Yeah. And, and if it's really quite severe we just say bin the shoes and buy new ones yeah right okay mm -hmm. yeah. one right. of the Definitely. other other conditions that can also occur especially in hot climates is mm. people can get very hot and sweaty feet yeah when when a person gets very sweaty feet, it also affects the skin. So you can get specific products to stop really sweaty feet. Uh -huh. um, obviously, when your feet sweat a lot, you can also get small cracks within the skin, and it also allows bacteria to get in. Ah, okay. You know, this is so much information, mm -hmm. and so much of it is, you know, those things, as I was saying, we're just taking for granted. Absolutely. You don't really, <clears throat> you know, actually think of these things, and uh, it, it's so important. I'm so happy that you all are here today, and we're bringing up this subject. This is so important that it gets, we're using our feet all day, yeah. and we're ignoring them. You know, it's basically Definitely. criminal. Okay, uh, Aisha, let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about the pedicures. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, sort of like the we all love a bit of pampering. <laughs> yeah. And what you know, how you need to be, what tips. So, uh, in I think first of all, I always advise my patients, especially diabetic patients that that go to salons and like a bit of pampering sessions. Why not? Yeah. But always take your own instruments. Take your own instruments. Do not trust. Okay, now that, that, that is really important. So if yeah. you are diabetic, of course you're going to be concerned about your feet. You do want to, don't want to end up with an infection, so take your own instruments. Okay. And make sure you sterilise those instruments. Yeah. <laughs> so there's no point, no point in just taking it. Yeah. <laughs> right, okay. And repeating the same thing. Yeah. And also make sure the, the, the products that your beautician or whoever your practitioner is using yeah. are suitable for your skin. Okay. So uh, sometimes I've seen people use all sorts of creams and they don't know what's the ingredient and what's actually in the cream. So mm. you need to make sure mm. that you know what's in the cream mm. that's being applied to you. So what are you looking out for? What, what should not salicylic be Salicylic acid, something okay. like salicylic acid. There's a lot of treatments like uh, for, um, corn, for, for, corn, for corn, for example, corn paint. plasters. Yeah. So uh, do not use corn plasters. I'm, I'm dead against them. <laughs> okay, all right. Yes, okay. because they cause maceration and then again infection. Yeah. Okay, um, okay. So with the acid, mm. they're not great. If you've got a corn plaster, there's just a bit of felt that just, just lifts that area up and just mm. takes the pressure off. They're fantastic to use and yeah. completely safe for diabetics. Mm. If you're using corn plaster with acid in there, however, mm. not so safe. And once again, it'll cause a bit of pressure, it'll cause a bit of sore mm. because you can't feel it. That's how the issues start to come in. Right, yeah. okay. So, you know, I think it's great that you guys are here and you're raising this awareness. You've, given, you've got these camps going as well, so people are going to get treated. What's going to happen when you guys go? Because then, you know, a person has an issue, they're watching the programme and they want to see a podiatrist or they want to yeah. see somebody who look after their feet what, what happens there so what we want to do is have this as an ongoing thing so it's not just going to be one visit we'll we'll inshallah be coming back with more podiatrists on board fantastic and eventually start a training program so Brilliant. what we're looking at is and we'll, we'll need the government to help us with this and i'm sure they will i, I mean this is such do. a this is I such a good cause and this yeah. is something that is we we have a health burden such a huge health burden of diabetes yes. mm -hmm. in the country anyway so this is something that, that so our vision is to introduce podiatry in mm. Pakistan mm. and we have physiotherapists, we mm. have uh, nutritionists, we have allied health profession here, yeah. however pod podiatry doesn't exist so we have to sort of work in collaboration with the government and introduce this on a national level mm. and and uh, yeah so we're, we're hoping for the government to help us mm -hmm. and we're there to help them. Mm. Fantastic. That's great. Okay, so, you know, as we were talking about um, amputations as well, you mentioned something about positive amputation. What is that? So, uh, we, I think we've talked about prevention, mm. but sometimes it, it does get too late. Mm. Sometimes the wound is, is chronic, it's not healing, mm. uh, the infection is spreading. So the best uh, solution at that point is to go for an amputation or if the, if, if the bones are infected. Mm. And 
there are patients, obviously nobody likes to lose their limb. It's mm. a part of your body. Of course, yeah. And uh, I think that's when we need to counsel our patients. We mm. cannot just break the news to them, okay, we're going to be uh, chopping your toe off or mm. we're, we're just going to be amputating. Mm. You need to sort of counsel the patients. Of you need course. to tell them that there is something like positive amputation. Mm. So once we do amputate, mm. your quality of li life will be a lot better. And if we don't amputate, then you could potentially be in sepsis and, mm. and you know, yeah. cause uh, serious complications, right. cause death, basically. Okay, so, you know, as I said, mentioned before at the beginning of the program, you're working over there, you're used to a certain environment, you know, the patients there and uh, who are coming to see you with a particular set of problems. And then here's another extreme. You've got the socioeconomic background mm. as well. Um, what would you like happening uh, at, you know, at, at a very sort of a grassroots level as well? How can you get more people to help you there? So what we really need to do there is train the healthcare assistants. Mm. So how we have health lady visitors. Yeah, lady health visitors. Yeah, yeah. lady health yeah. visitors, sorry. Uh, so we need to sort of, um, Abid has a great idea behind this. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we'd this like is, to This hear is that. something that I've got a lot of passion towards. And I've, Fantastic. And I don't want to repeat the mistakes that have been made in the past. So people have tried this in 2006 in India and it failed after a year or two. So mm. I'm, I'm, I've been reading about and I've been studying all the other programs that have occurred and mm. the way that we have devised a full care assistant training program will be more sustainable than that, that has happened previously. Mm. So we've got a a one week program which is a very basic program mm. and then we've got a six to eight week program which is very intense mm. um, but we need to make a start somewhere mm. uh, these are very lofty aspirations so we do need governmental help mm. for this mm. for these aspirations but yeah we do i mean what i don't want and what we don't want is this to be like a flash in the pan we come yeah. we treat and we're gone yeah because yeah. that's that's not what we're about we want right. to combat with more podiatrists but we want to train local people mm. to be able to do foot screening and foot treatment as well. Mm. Right, okay. And this is your first camp that's going to yeah. take place, yes. isn't it? <laughs> okay. These two camps are first. Okay. So and how long will you be in Pakistan? For one week. For one week. For one week. And for one week you're going to do, you know, yeah. have these camps and then you're going back. You know, we'd, we'd love to hear back from you and uh, find out how it's been. Definitely. So then uh, we can sort of share those experiences as well. And then you can also, you know, tell, uh, you know, the people who matter and the viewers and you know, everyone who, who it affects that what, how everyone, because it's basically everybody working together, isn't it? It's yeah. not just you guys coming mm -hmm. over and mm -hmm. having this cab. It, you need, as you said, you need to hear people, yeah. you, need, you need to be looked at, uh, after here. So, you know, tell me about one of your, you know, most interesting sort of uh, um, uh, encounters with, with patients and um, anything that can be of interest to our viewers? So uh, there's one story that I always like to share, right. and this is a story, so I have um, seeked permission from my patient before I discuss her here. Okay. So she's, she was 32 when she came to me for the first time. Uh, she had a little child. Mm -hmm. The baby was about one, one and a half years old. Mm -hmm. She had a chronic wound on her on plantar aspect, on, on the sole of the feet. Mm. And uh, she came to me she was almost depressed. Mm. She was uh, she was she was basically uh, almost suicidal, I would say. Mm. And the chronic wound it wasn't healing, so she was uh, she was bedridden for two years. She two had been to many uh, doctors, and uh, they were they were putting her on all sorts of medication. She was on medication for tuberculosis. She was on medication for um, you name it, and she had taken it. And um, so what we did, and it was just a see, easy treatment. It was mm. simple. We just had to offload that mm. wound. Okay. Yeah, and mm -hmm. uh, and all I did was debrided the wound, gave her uh, appropriate antibiotics, and offloaded, and she healed within six weeks. Oh, that's fantastic. So it was it was a it was a great mm -hmm. experience fantastic. for me and her, and and she has such a. A good quality of life now and we're, we're constantly in touch and we're, we're working on her so we've, we've we've got a treatment plan for her and uh, that's fantastic that's, so, that's uh, lovely to hear you've heard stories. a good story so let me yeah. tell you a bad story okay. <laughs> um, I know a gentleman who was a type 2 diabetic mm. um, he thought he had a corn on the bottom of his foot so he kept on putting a corn plaster he had very limited sensation on the bottom of his foot what he actually had was and what you couldn't feel was he had a nail about a quarter inch long 
in his foot. Uh, I took it out and he had a, quite a large infection there afterwards. So we had to send him to hospital. He did heal, but it did take a long time. It was over 18 months. Um, but this was the importance of not, one, not looking at your feet on a regular basis, but two, to understand that when you have diabetes for a certain amount of time, you will lose sensation in your foot. You can walk onto a nail like he did Ooh. and not even feel as though you walked onto a nail. Oh, God. Right. Uh, ever, uh, ever since the beginning of this program, I've been wiggling my toes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, like, I'm feeling them okay. <laughs> so anyway, you know, unfortunately, we've come to the end of the program. It's been fantastic having you all here. A very, very short message from each of you as we say goodbye. I would just say, um, if you have diabetes, it's really important that you take care of yourself. Take, take it seriously, understand what's happening, and take it upon yourself to ensure that complications don't occur. Right. I would say... Um, if you have even 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 a small cut, mm -hmm. seek help. Do not self-treat. Right. You need more. Again. Footwear. Okay. Um, yeah, I, w I would say that uh, um, a lot of patients suffer with um, the complication because of the footwear. So footwear is very important. Make sure it's uh, a perfect fit and right. uh, it's good material um, and it's right for your foot. Fantastic. I would say. Um, a large emphasis of diabetes tends to be on the eyes and, and, and like other issues. Yeah. We need to take foot complications seriously in Pakistan. It is so, so vital. So true. Thank you so much for being with Thank us here today. Thank you for having us. It's been fantastic. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Okay, and with that, we come to the end of today's program. Hope you have found it informative. I certainly have. Uh, we've learned so many, so many things. And the main thing about any problem is the awareness and the importance to understand get, you know what can it lead to prevention is always better than cure we've spoken about diabetic foot please take it seriously if you or somebody in your family suffers from diabetes these are the things that are really really important for you so until next week stay happy stay healthy bye bye <laughs>